thank you very much for having me today, and, and especially to Raj Kapoor, who's made me wear a tie for five days in a row, and it's, uh, it's a very, very first. You can see I'm kind of a casual person. <clears throat> I came to India first in 1990. I was asked by a PETA to come here, study the Namkeem market production, and to assess the market potential in North America, United States, Canada, and Mexico. It's just absolutely amazing now to be back here in India, seeing Namkeem, snack food, and other different products using California and American products. So it just tells me that something's very good about win-win situation of trade between the United States, California, India. We have a lot to share. A lot of it has to do with technology, keeping up on technology, being up in that new wave. So thank you very much. And I'm just honored to see so many people that I've known from those many, many years here. And thank you. It's just an absolute pleasure. <clears throat> Today I'm here to talk about fruit and nut ingredients. But first of all, I want to explain a little bit about the California Export Council. And it all, I attribute a lot of this to my boss, is Carla Stockley. She's back in Madeira, California. She's a farmer from a farming family and is the CEO of the California Export <coughs> Council. And um, it was her idea We've been working on individual products such as figs and dates and other different items that are members of the California Agricultural Export Council. They are the smaller agriculture industries. Her idea was let's work for putting together activities for new category of ingredients. For years, California has shipped boatloads of agricultural commodities to India, India to the United States. But what we're working on is that next phase, what we call ingredient solutions. But we work for all of the products that are produced in California, my home state. I'm from Sacramento, California, a native Californian, and I'm very proud of this, and I'm very thankful for... Perfect. They're saving me from having a big accident. And we'll take it away, but first thanks to Carla, and I, she's wanted me to tell you that she's going to be coming back in February, because out of all the countries we work in the world, India is her favorite, and she will, likes to sit down and have masala doses every morning. First of all, um, how many people in this room have been to California? This is very, very good, because everywhere I've been, very rarely, but as you see here on the map, California is on the left, on the west coast. I almost slipped and said left coast, but the west coast of the, of the United States. You're probably familiar where Las Vegas is. But if you see here, the map of California, you see that big green valley. That's the California Central Valley. Right in the middle of that is Sacramento, my hometown, where all my family live. This is also where almost all of the agriculture production in California is done, along with a number of other different smaller areas and interesting areas. We call this the golden state for a lot of reasons, but one of the things about it, it's the agricultural leader that just is a powerful, powerful machine. When you talk to California farmers, they'll bore you to death talking about we're the largest of this, of that, and other different items. But yes, we are. But what I'd like to show you first, whoops. Could you put it back to start, please? One more back, back, back. There you go. That was my fault. Sorry, guys. But these agriculture leaders, you see there that big green valley is the central valley. But right in the middle of it, and my pointer isn't really working, so sorry, that's why I hit it, but is the Sacramento. North of Sacramento is called the Sacramento Valley. Below that is the San Joaquin Valley. And on the regions, there are regions of productions in the coastal regions where you'll have different types of agriculture. And if you look in the very, very furthest south area of that map, you'll see the desert. And that's where dates and other different types of products are done. But each one of these areas are very special. And here we are. I want to take you for a real quick tour of California fruits and nuts that we're going to be talking about today.
now that you're all jazzed up, we're going to take you and start looking at a few of these other different things. This next slide, I know you can't really read it, but it actually astonished me when I opened up the California Agriculture Atlas for exports for 2021. But you don't have to look at the different statistics on that thing, but you see that big chart on the top. That's California almonds. And it's well over $4, million, $4 billion worth of value. The rest of the different commodities that you see, pistachios, walnuts and oranges, tomatoes and strawberries, all are significant producing products. And what I wanted to say from this thing is that although we're always talking about commodities, for us, there's this whole other category that I wanted to talk to you about today, which is specialty fruits and nuts. The idea is they've been shipping boatloads of almonds here for, since the 1990s. I was there when they first brought them in. And, but what we're talking about are new items that are produced in California that are of interest to your businesses. Well, I've been talking to some of my friends here, and what I have tell them is we've got some items that are solutions for your business. In other words, not just selling you a blueberry or an almond, but by selling you a blueberry or almond that fits into your product, makes it better, makes it easier for you, and makes it easier for you to make money on it too. So again, welcome to the very big world of ingredient solutions. And this is a little bit difficult to read, but um, I wanted you, just, you to show is that we've got this whole value chain matrix here. We've got the fresh fruits on the left, we got a liquid channel, we got liquid concentrates, and we have a freezing channel. We have another channel of dehydration, but in that freezing area, we also infuse it with syrups in order to make it softer. In the dehydration area, we have sun-dried, like natural California raisins or figs. We have air-dried, where we put them into hot air to bring down the moisture to make it shelf-stable. We have freeze-dried, and then we also have micro-dry, which, re which removes the moisture down to 4 or 5 percent. This is something that's very, very important to food processors because we all know in most food processing application, moisture is a problem. Putting a product in with a low water activity is quite important. We also have micro-dried, which is a very different different type of product where it destabilizes the moisture in the in interior of the fruit. Raj, can you ask him to please? Thank you. It, re it removes the, mo it destabilizes the moisture in the interior of the fruit and then it vacuums the moisture out. It's like freeze dried, except that it is a soft fruit. And then we also have on the bottom, drum dried, where we put fruit into a hot drum and tumble it in order to make it what it is, dried. And that turns into a powder. And what we have here is we have a whole dried fruits, we have ground into powders, we got them extruded into paste, and we do, a, do a whole fruit, but then we do slicing and dicing of the fruit to get it into the right size and milling it into the right size so you can put it into powders and other different things, especially in the biscuits like we were talking to. And then we have dried fruits that are sized in shape. We extrude it, we've got diced nuggets. We've got sliced product that's precisely the right size. We've got flakes that can be put into breakfast cereals and other different things. And then we get powdered into the different screen sizes. And I'm just gonna take you for a quick whirl of that world that I work in, that whole, ingredient solution world. Here we have on the left hand side, we have fruits and nuts, fresh, frozen, and dried. The whole idea is that frozen fruit and fresh fruit can't fit into a lot of your products right away. So we take that first step to deliver. When Carla and I first came here to India, Raj kindly set us up for a meeting at an ice cream company that was producing huge, huge volumes of fig and year ice cream. And of course, I walked in and I'm the, I'm the sales guy from California. Here's my figs, we're the best, you, you should use them. He said, well, well, we've used truckloads of figs from Afghanistan every, every day and your product is far more expensive. So that pretty much ended the meeting 
until we walked into the back of their factory and there were 200 people slicing figs to put into the ice cream and it was not the most sanitary conditions. The next visit that Carla and I made to back to India, we brought diced figs. The factory owner's eyes got very big and said, wow, this is great. This is sanitary. It's wonderful. I could take those 200 people and put them to work in very important positions all over our factory and make our product better and, and, make, and, make, and everybody wins. So right now, they're using that solution that we accidentally brought to them to make their business easier. But what we do is we look at that and we've got the specifications. First would be size. Size is very important when it comes to food products. You have to, and size consistency. You just can't slice things up. You want to get them very precise. We can do that. The shape is very, very important. In berries, you need small berries for certain applications, large ones for, for others. Moisture content is very, very important. If you need a product that's 18% moisture, it better be 18% moisture. But we can do that in our applications. Water activity, which is the, most of you are food technologists or, or, or processors, realize that water activity is more important than moisture. That's the way in which the moisture releases from that fruit. You need low water activity, which means if you put a low moisture fig nugget into a breakfast cereal, it's going to have a low water activity. It's not going to make the cereal flakes mushy. So we can give you precise, precise water activity in your product, which is another big benefit. The color, the specific gravity, and I could go on and on and on on these different things. But each one of these different types of fruits and nuts from California are in a primary state. What we're working on now is working with you, with your almond, your prune, and fig suppliers is to work on that next phase that next advancement, which means working with us, getting into this ingredient solution area to help you sell your product to your end users. Whoops, back please. Back. Back. There we go. I forgot to do one more of my things. But it's tailored to precise size and shape, shelf stable, moisture, Aesthetics, big. Rheology, which means extrusion, extrudability. And then making it sure that it's clean and microbiologically sound. I had, I had um, dinner the other night with my friend who's a, a large dried fruit guy. He's increasing his business by working to be able to trace, to for a consumer and an end user to trace the microbiological assay of that product to show that it's clean. The same thing for almonds and other different things. What does that mean? He's able to sell his prunes and his almonds and figs to baby foods and other different areas where he couldn't do before. But this is a new wave, the new interesting area, and I'm, I'm just so happy that we got food technology people, food associations, people like Orchard and, uh, and companies that actually understand and really walk with us on this venture. I'm going to take you just for a little spin right now. But first of all, I just wanted to show you, we saw all those primary items. This is an apple in California. We have the Fuji apples. But we do air, all of these things, air dried, flakes, and natural and sulfured. But over here on the right, the innovation by drying and air drying those apples down to a low moisture content, they're able to produce ultra low moisture products such as this fruit leather that's made with absolutely nothing but apples. And that's because of the ingredient solution of bringing it to that moisture and delivering that moisture. This is my favorite. Every year we have the Super Bowl at, where the National Football League and then everybody goes home and eats guacamole and Doritos. But, and what they do is this, this is our avocados. You're a big avocado producers. But through um, technology, mostly technology developed by the US Department of Agriculture, high pressure processing, they're able to extend the shelf life of this product. Here's the new wave. Here's the solution. Dehydrate the avocado to around 7 to 8% moisture, air dried, 
and extrude it into the chip. So what you've done is you've created a solution to be able to put avocado directly into that chip and save the Super Bowl. This is just a, a little example, and I'll, I've got a, a sample of this for Rajinder when, when you go, but it's, it's, it's one for you. This is my favorite. Raj is Mr. Blueberry here, so he could, he could tell you all about it, but I've had a little experience in blueberry myself. But fresh blueberries are, have a shelf life of about three weeks. Frozen, about 18 months. The new solution has to do with taking that blueberry and dry blueberry, which is infused with syrup to stabilize it and lower the water activity. That's everywhere. That's one that most people have here in India. The next is to air dry it, which is a little difficult because when you air dry a blueberry, the water activity it releases water after it's been dried. So you don't see that very often unless it's in a real high-end uh, product. But where the solution has to be is with freeze drying which is where they freeze it and then suck the moisture out of the product down to three or four percent moisture, or micro-dry, which is a really interesting military-developed concept where they destabilize the moisture of that blueberry or strawberry and then vacuum the moisture out, where you can physically have a blueberry that looks like a blueberry, that feels like a blueberry, with four percent moisture ready to go into a breakfast cereal. Interesting. And there it is. And then the, what's happened over the years is we take those freeze-dried and micro-dry and we turn them into powders. Can anybody take a guess where the most heavily used application for powder would be? Natural cosmetics. Number two, pet foods. Number three, baby foods. Number four, breakfast cereals. These are all areas where we had no possibility of ever selling a blueberry by taking this ingredient solution, we're able to address it. Apricots, we've got some really beautiful apricots up here in the front. They're called the Blenheim apricot. But I've, we have a, a whole list of different fruits, like pears and apricots and all these other different things. But, and they've all, always been able to be air dried or sun dried. But the ingredient solution that I see that we're using is we're taking those sun-dried or, or naturally dried for all these different fruits and precisely drying them and getting them into the shapes that get them into the baking area. Precise size, precise moisture content, precise water activity, and then you can, with that, you can do five or six different fruits. And that's, that's the key. You can have a container or a, or a warehouse or a pantry with different fruits that are ready to use without refrigeration, without, without freezing. Lemons are, are an interesting one, and this happens to be Meyer lemons. I, I grow Meyer lemons. They're the best lemon in the whole world. They're very sweet. They grow really pretty much only in California. But what I wanted to show here as an ingredient solution is every year the lemons market goes up and down and there's different prices day to day, but one of the hottest areas, or the most growing areas, is ingredient solutions made with lemons. And what I have here, air dried lemons and flakes, peels, freeze dried and then microwave dried. And here's an example, this is Lipton tea. And I've been to the factory and they utilize pure, whole, natural lemon flakes that are micro dried to put into their tea. It's a little bit expensive, but they can put on there made with real lemon. And it, most of it comes from California, and it's something that you might be able to think about for other different products in, that you do, that you can do that and make, make that, that flavoring. Down there in um, the very tip of California that I pointed, very close, if you ever drive from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, you go pretty close to this place, is the Bard Valley where they make the dates. There's two different types. There's the Deglat and the Medjool. The Medjools are those giant ones that you see here that the Saudis absolutely love. It's really big for Ramazan where they, uh, they pay big price, but where they're doing now is very few of those dates are really marketable. They actually throw away a lot. The, the big term in California, in India, is upcycling. It's taking food waste and making it valuable. Here's an example of what they do with the date waste is they make date sugar, 100% date. 
air dried down to a sugar content, we are selling that in California, selling it in a natural food business for an extremely high markup compared to what white sugar would be. But it's just something, it's a good example of what you can do with upcycling to create an ingredient solution. Bing cherries, in California, in the Central Valley, about, about 100 kilometers south of where I grew up in Sacramento, we have big cherry business. These are Bing cherries and dark cherries. And you, thanks to the US Department of Agriculture, you have ability to buy these fresh cherries in your market right now. But every year, it's almost like a gamble. They, they only the very best cherries can go and be shipped to the fresh market. So what do you do? Upcycling to create ingredient solutions. The first thing we have the whole, we take these cherries, we infuse them with sweetener or cherry juice concentrate and then dehydrate them to around 18% and you've got a beautiful ready to use pitted cherry. We take that and we dice them or else we make a paste that goes into bakery products. And then we also do this very high end micro dry. This here, I say innovation because I think it's really innovation. This is a company in Hollister, California called Marich Confectionery. Inside this, these look like cherries. Inside there you have a whole infused cherry, infused with cherry juice concentrate, coated with white chocolate, and dusted with cherry powder, 100% cherry powder, that gives you a knockout punch of cherry flavor. And I think that's just one flavor application after another, which this product, I think, is very applicable for India as well, because people here, this is the land of the $500 sun, sunglasses, and this is, this is a high-end product, but I just think the idea of using this kind of application of ingredient solution is something to, something to think about. This happens to be, this is not the same company that, did, that I visited, but it's the only photo I could get, but in figs, we have the dark mission fig. We actually, we, I brought dark mission figs here, to, to sample, but somebody ate them on the way because they love them so much. I think I have to ask Raj what, what happened to the figs, but, but they, people here love figs more than we do back in California. But we do the dark figs, and they're very, very good. Well, what we've done with our figs, knowing that only the very best figs go in fresh and dried, we are making products which are ingredient solutions such as diced, a fig paste, and then one step further, where we take a fig paste and then we extrude it into cubes. The cubes in the paste, the paste actually get, is tempered, so the water activity drops. So actually breakfast cereals in, Cal in America utilize an extruded, or we call them an e-diced paste, a bit that works very well. And I think that's something that could work very, very well in biscuits and in breakfast cereals and other different, other different activities. But also right now, it's interesting here, it could be pasteurized and sized just, just for the basic use. This is, this is kind of a mystery one to me because on the far left-hand corner of that table, you'll see what people here might think is a mulberry, but it's a blackberry. It's an American blackberry. It's one of the most delicious fruits you've ever gotten your hands on. And t quite often when you, when you do, a couple people er earlier today I talked to said, yeah, I've had blackberries, but they're really sour. Well, yes, they, they typically can be sour, but these blackberries are infused with blackberry juice concentrate and then freeze dried. It's really incredible. The, the, bl the blackberry stays together and it's a really nice snack, but it has three years of shelf life and I read up an article that these dried, freeze-dried blackberries are in, been studied and are on the NASA Mars missions of the future. There's a whole division of people down in Houston, Texas that are developing products to be to taken on these, these long space missions, including Mars and other different places. But I thought it's quite interesting. But they call them, we also have dried, we call, anybody heard the word druplet? The actual, pieces of the blueberry of the blackberry are called druplets, but they have dried druplets and there must be a place for it, but what that happens to be one of the upcycled areas because we have very uh, a huge amount of, of upcycled product that needs to be upcycled. And that's making not, not 
not from juice and concentrate. And one other item that I wanted to bring up has to do with essence. All of these different fruits that we make, we take the last step, which we make juice concentrate. We capture the aroma, the, the volatile flavors, into what's called essence. If you go to the United States now, you will see a whole section of the supermarket of natural seltzer waters that are essenced. They come directly from this process, natural product that it's no, no calories, just flavor. But you're taken to the essence that has been captured in that that's concentrate. And I think that's also another area that is really interesting for India. And it also works very well in the natural cosmetics and gives this really nice aroma. Some food processors that are making fillings, sometimes you get a filling you make, and it doesn't really have that, that punch that you want of, of, of blueberry or raspberry or strawberry. You can put the essence into that product, and it really brings it back. Kiwi fruit, this is kiwi fruit granules that are done from freeze drying. Just really, really interesting. It takes a, a natural fruit, with, and we micro dry it or freeze dry it, and we mill it into into a powder. There's a company up in Canada that makes an extruded kiwi fruit breakfast cereal. And I, I thought, hey, that sounds really, really strange, have, eating a green breakfast cereal. But they said, hey, everybody likes it up there in Canada, so maybe it will work for here. This one is, I, I, you are a prune-loving country. So, so is the United States. And one of the things about pr uh, 10 years ago, I've worked in the prune business for quite a while, too. I always used to be embarrassing to tell somebody I work in prunes. It's kind of, it was like I met, met the fellow that was a marketing manager at one of the prune companies, and he managed the decline. Well, all of a sudden, prunes are popular. But one of the interesting things, I think, is prunes are a carrier. This is, uh, this is the Mariani and, and Sunsweet and other different companies. They're actually taking probiotics, which are really good for your stomach, adding some of these probiotics that need to be entered into your system to give you the, the gut health. It's extremely popular right now in Japan, so I just wanted to throw you this. This really is an ingredient solution of making this product a whole lot more desirable for things. But we also have freeze-dried I mean, prunes, flakes, powders, and juice concentrate. Pomegranates, thanks to the USDA and the, the Foreign Agriculture Service and the, and the APHIS, they're now, we are able to buy pomegranate arrows from India and in Indians are able to buy cherries from the United States. Win-win. But back in the States, one of the things that we're doing is upcycling our arrows. And what we're doing is we're doing dried arrows, air-dried, freeze-dried, and micro-dry. And I think this is a really, really interesting idea of, of, of the product. But what it, that is used right now is it's being sold in the produce section with vegetables to put these crunchy, pomegranate arrows onto your salads. Again, it's an ingredient solution. It's been upcycled, and it's really popular. Raspberries, just like that blackberry, I wanted you, we do the same thing with the raspberry. And believe it or not, if you buy a raspberry in the supermarket, you bring it home, chances are it's going to have fallen apart. This is a freeze-dried raspberry that looks like a natural raspberry. Where is this used? It's, it's sold in the freeze-dry section, and it's crunchy. It should stay crunchy. But one of the most popular uses of this product is when we mill the culls down into a powder. Right now, it's, it's a very, very popular item. We sell it to Japan in the cosmetic business, where this product is associated with skin care, where it's a topical application using this product. Raspberries have a centuries of use in Ayurveda, in natural cosmetics and, and for health. So it's just something to think about. Here again, we're taking a product that we don't know what to do with. We've upcycled it. Now we've turned it into an ingredient solution. Strawberries, the same thing. The strawberries, very few strawberries are perfect enough to ship export. And we have a very short season for strawberries as well. This is a Japanese product where they buy our strawberries and it is a freeze-dried strawberry, and you have some here. Typically, freeze-dry, you have to keep it sealed. It brings on moisture later. But this freeze-dry of strawberry 
is a ingredient solution for confectionery in whole. Anyone here who's in, involved in chocolate and confectionery, you can attest that moisture is your enemy. You have to keep things in a very low moisture, so one of the biggest uses for berry powders and whole berries is in the confectionery business. It's a value-added ingredient solution that confectioners like to work with. You can't take a frozen blueberry and put it into a chocolate bar. It ain't going to work. You get this ingredient solution of, it could be kiwi powder, it could be raspberry powder or whatever. It's, it's going to work. And also, from that we do concentrates and such. This is just, I thought this one would throw on you. I always, my family are walnut growers. We've been doing it a long time, and pretty much we do the same thing. We do in-shell walnuts. What do you do? Well, it's, I talked to my friend, who's a walnut importer here, and he's selling the, un, the, the walnut culls. He's selling it to cosmetic companies here for facial ap applications. The skin of that walnut has some wonderful application powers. I also wanted to show you here something that's become very, very interesting. In Europe, they use walnuts and they press them to make walnut oil, which is a very high-end ingredient solution in the product when it's used in the culinary business as well. This is one that, up there on that chart that I showed you with that giant almond thing, somewhere about halfway down there was tomatoes. Every year when the tomatoes are harvested in California, I drive up to see my mother in Sacramento. There's usually a tomato truck that's, that's tipped over and got a big pile of tomatoes on the road. But what do they do with those, with the tomatoes that aren't perfect for canning and different things? Is this whole new area of dried and sun-dried, which you're doing here. But these really, really interesting, these granules and powders, they're used for application. The number one application of this is color. Most everyone here in this room, you know that paprika oleoresin, which is produced normally in Africa and Zimbabwe and everything, is a perfect application for coloring biscuits and other different things. Tomatoes, the same thing. But, and it's a really interesting flavor that it'll do, but it's just something to think about when you, when you come to these beautiful tomato granules. Almonds. Everybody here should be an expert on almonds with that giant amount. Out, that, out of that giant bar chart that you saw here, there's a lot of that bar chart is going to India. It's the largest, I looked at the statistics this morning, and it pretty much floored me. It's one of the largest almond markets, or the largest almond market in the world for California. But here's one of the reasons why, is that in your country, you actually have some extremely important or creative people. And it fits perfectly into some of your things like burfi and different, just the almonds everywhere. If you go to, if you go to the Halderums and all these different, the different companies, you're going to see stuff. But this is an example of something that was produced last week in India, an almond burfi. That's why, but all of these imperfect almonds, milled almonds, almond flour, are perfect for culinary applications. It's not really upcycled because it's all in, in, in good stuff. But I just, um, there's a whole different range, and I see a bunch of them from some of the suppliers that are here. Take a look at those things and think about where this can be a solution in your product. Pistachios were one of those other big bars that are out there, is that it's shelled pistachios, diced, and pistachio meal. But I thought this was really interesting, is that one of the areas where it's being used for, really creatively here in India, is in color that beautiful green color that comes out of that thing and it goes into these Indian sweets. But I just think that's just really, really wonderful. I've taken a lot of your time and I'm really thankful for all your um, attention and uh, being able to discuss this thing, of which is a passion for me. And I'm, again, I'm thankful to see all of you, but I just want to tell you is that what are we doing or what am I doing for the, the California Agriculture Export Council? And you got Raj sitting there, and he's the, he's the Raja of, uh, of ingredients here in, um, in India. But we, technical assistants, I'm a food scientist, I've been doing it for 30 years. I've worked for pretty much every one of these industries in doing the technical applications, formulas or recipes, and education and one-on-one -on -one things. So we're here. I've got a, a WhatsApp number. I'm always, always happy to see you, and um, I hope I still have a few more reasons to come to India and, and to get together with you all. And thank you very much for your attention.